Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India we talked about uh, several uh, indole synthesis. This is the last class on indole synthesis, not uh, last class of the heterocyclic chemistry. Okay. Uh, so, last time we talked about what uh, three different methods, one was uh, Fischer indole synthesis, other was no, what is the second one? Bartoli synthesis, third one Nenit Jetsko. Okay. And what I said on the basis of the starting material you should remember, uh, because that is the way it is pretty easy. Uh, so for example, when I say Fischer indole means it starts with uh, hydrogen derivatives okay. and then next thing what you should remember the most uh, common intermediates. For example, Fischer indole synthesis, one of the most common intermediates could be vinyl hydrogen. So, then you can that means, if you know the intermediates, you can you know just uh, formulate your own synthesis and the, on the basis of that and there are so many variants. One of the variants is the variant is uh, Jap Klingman method. So, where you can uh, make it uh, hydrogen by a different way. Second variant could be Modi's one, uh, Christopher Modi's one, he has made this uh, Bock protected hydrogen derivative. So, likewise, there are many more. Uh, Buchwald also has, uh, Buchwald also has uh, produced a uh, variant. So, uh, similarly, uh, Bartoli, Bartoli is pretty easy to remember, it, it requires nitro benzenes. Nitroalkene, uh, nitroarenes, and uh, Grignard, vinyl Grignard. No, not any kind of Grignard. Again, a vinyl Grignard. That was vinyl hydrogen and vinyl Grignard. And uh, third category, third, third category was on basis of this Nenizetsko. Nenizetsko requires the uh, what? Benzoquinones, benzoquinones, and inamino ketones. So this is how we have to remember. Okay. So, there are many ways, to, there are many more methods, many more methods and uh, I think uh, we will talk about today uh, one uh, very important uh, indole synthesis, uh, which is not really listed in the books, most of the books, uh, very few books would enlist, but it is a, as you will go, uh, go and see that uh, it is a pretty powerful reaction, very powerful reaction. There are little, there are very little problems of course, and uh, so, uh, this afternoon we will talk about the mainly three. So, the, this, uh, the, uh, the one that is called uh, Himetz, uh, Himetz burger, this is uh, one we will talk about and then second one uh, probably we will talk about, uh, uh, second one probably we will talk about um, uh, how, how do we say, okay. let us say cross uh, D hydro uh, genetic hydrogenative coupling, the hydrogenative coupling, and third one that probably we will talk about uh, is uh, again a very uh, uh, powerful, uh, this is called Laro um, hetero uh, annulation, uh, annulation, which is again Laro, uh, one, one can say. Um, uh, indole um, synthesis by Larox method, and the uh, fourth one that uh, it depends uh, the, the time permits. We'll uh, talk about uh, again. This would be uh, there is no name, but uh, uh, I think I'll uh, how is that? I, I'll write Nokel, not really Nokel, but Nokel type 
synthesis. No, this is uh, okay. Now, as we go on again, I said you have to identify the starting material, then the little bit of mechanism, then the applications. Okay, and so uh, let us begin with this uh, Hemetsberger. Uh, Hemet um, so what does it do? Actually, it re it requires it uh, requires um, uh, beta azido styrene. Beta azido styrene. So, so that means uh, if you write this structure this way, what you will see here, uh, the adjacent position is alpha. So, this is beta. So, beta azido styrene. And if you heat it, not very at high temperature, uh, just at less than 20, 200 degree centigrade. So, what you are likely to get, you are likely to get a product which is nothing but in one that means uh, sort of like a neutral conditions uh, you can get uh, to the product here this is indoor that is it. So, uh, right and what is the mechanism? The mechanism is that it is suggested it is suggested it loses nitrogen. So, it loses nitrogen and of course, once it loses nit the azide loses nitrogen that means, uh, what you will be getting? You will be getting this nitrine intermediate. So, like carbene and nitrine and of course, one can uh, nitrine right and, but then uh, what happens? Then the nitrine what are, what are the other uh, possible reactions with the nitrine? Nit nitrine insertion. Yes, uh, well, I think the very first thing that one should uh, uh, talk about is the isomerization, because isomerization requires only very little change in this skeleton. So, in fact, this is suggested and it has been verified as you will see later that uh, uh, it uh, gives you uh, a mo molecule of this kind, so which is nothing but uh, azirine. So, nothing but azidine. So, azidine derivative you get. Okay. And uh, so, then of course, uh, if you recall, this uh, azidine derivative uh, has a propensity to undergo uh, rearrangement. What kind of rearrangement? Pretty much like that, not exactly though. Uh, so, uh, so, that means that can undergo this one. Okay. And uh, so, then. Uh, this is the uh, suggested mechanism and probably it is accepted. Uh, only the, you, can, uh, you can also uh, question uh, why not directly nitrine undergoes insertion to this uh, carbon hydrogen uh, bond of this benzene ring systems. All that possibility is ruled out as you will go and see the next example, we will see there are quite a few variants of this where you can start from azirine, azirine and you can go on making this indole. And simply because azidines are more very readily available or from a simple starting material like oxime, you can make azidines pretty easily without much problem. Okay. And um, so, let us uh, begin with an example. And uh, <coughs> like say, uh, if you are supposed to make uh, an indole derivative, for example, uh, where you will have uh, indole and two position you will have a hydroxy methyl group hydroxy methyl group and um, bromo here and then this uh, benzyl protecting group and then um, OME. That means, a heavily substituted indole derivative. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 substitute. So, how do you make it? So, uh, how do you make it? Any guess? That means, uh, uh, if you uh, look at the uh, top one, one would find out if the, um, uh, one would make a vinyl kind of azide or azido styrene you can make right. So, so what kind of azido styrene we will take? We will not take and that means, uh, if you just do a little bit of the uh, disconnections, you will find that you need a azido styrene and azido styrene uh, with a CH 2 OH functional group. But, there, but at the same time you have to think about whether that is really required or not. If you want to know the methods of how to make the azido styrene, you will see that it is little difficult to make number 1. Number 2 if you begin with a CH 2 OH group 
uh, uh, during the decomposition of the azide, there is a likelihood that this uh, it will undergo uh, nitrine insertion on the other side instead of being uh, formed uh, in, instead of being rather instead of giving this uh, azide in intermediates. Okay. So, in, the, in this case you had an ester, in the top one you had an ester group. So, there was no possibility of insertion on the right hand side on the ester side, but if you think of a CH2O is here uh, you can think of an uh, insertion reaction with the nitrine. So, uh, essentially in this case uh, what has been done uh, this has been uh, obtained from the corresponding ester derivative uh, corresponding ester derivative and this aldehyde. So, take the aldehyde here and then the, uh, the azido ester in this case uh, this azido ester is pretty easy to make. So, uh, take then uh, sodium ethoxide or methoxide uh, ethoxide then uh, typically what you will find you will find just like in uh, an alcohol type of condensation. So, you will get this uh, you will get this azido esters and then what uh, just simply again heat uh, in uh, xylene solution. So, you get this corresponding you will get the corresponding uh, indole uh, indole th that is uh, this one uh, without any much problem and so you will have this methyl ester here and of course uh, once you know that you have this methyl ester is there then uh, it is pretty to, uh, easy to uh, reduce this to corresponding alcohol. Okay. So, this is uh, pretty uh, st uh, straightforward. Then uh, what is the problem then? There is just only a small limitation is there. Anybody who knows about the uh, limitations of the um, azides, what could be the limitations? You see here just uh, the preparation is pretty easy. If you have azido uh, acetate, you can do so, uh, sort of an aldol type, you can get the vinyl azide, that is all these problems are pretty easy. But uh, little the, this reaction is little tricky that is it, uh, but that is not a serious problem. The problem is, is that large scale production, because uh, it is known that in most cases these uh, azido compounds are, um, are explosives, azides, azides are explosive. So, whenever you uh, do reactions with uh, azides, you have to be very careful, you never know when it explodes. In small quantity of course, I mean uh, um, we have been doing work on this, but so far we have not come across any problem, but uh, it is reported that uh, one should be pretty um, um, careful about this. But um, uh, merits of this method is that you do not have to make azide though, that means you can bypass it because we know the reaction mechanism. What was the reaction mechanism? Azides when decomposes it forms the azirin. So, azirin can be made alternatively uh, by you know uh, at least I know there are two different very convenient methods. For example, the one uh, way to make is to uh, make an an oxime. So, if you begin with an oxime here uh, like oxime I mean all of us know how to make oxime right uh, this corresponding ketone and hydroxyl amine hydrochloride it is a very uh, rea good reaction and it is a standard reaction for derivatizing ketone and so it is a problem. Then uh, you do uh, never reaction, never reaction what is never reaction? Never reaction is nothing but the first step you are uh, first step you make this uh, into methyl derivative that means methane uh, sulfonyl chloride and uh, triethylamine. So, I think I do not have to write the intermediate it, it converts the oxygen uh, the, the OH group to OMS right. So, this basically OH is converted to OMS and then second step if you do uh, uh, DBU. So, what you will be getting you will be getting the corresponding uh, as, azirene sorry. So, uh, we will be corresponding in getting one, uh, one two okay, nitrogen here double bond and this uh, R 1 and R 2. So, you get the sagirin of course, that means uh, uh, you can uh, you can bypass the demerits of the Hemertzberger procedure. Okay. Alternatively there is another way of looking at uh, one uh, just uh, take let us say you have uh, something like this 
uh, R1 and uh, let us say an electron withdrawing uh, electron sorry withdrawing if an electron withdrawing group and NH2 NH2. So, how do we make it? It is an enamino ester. In the last class we talked about it, right? Now, this enamino esters are required in, in the reaction of Nenidjets reaction, Nenidjets reaction. So, uh, it is easy to make. So, if beta keto ester kind of things, then ammonia that would give this. So, the same starting material, same starting material if it is reacted with a <coughs> reagent uh, which is uh, written as this one phenyl iodinium diacetate, phenyl iodinium diacetate is a very useful reagent, very useful reagent and for last maybe what 10 years we have been continuously using this reagent and this belongs to a uh, class of reagent known as guess very good hypervalent iodine reagent there are plenty of reagents based on this why hypervalent normally hyper iodine is considered to be monovalent in this case divalent there are pentavalents also all of you know, but uh, most cases the trivalent iodines are pretty powerful oxidizing agents and mild and selective. So, depending on the situation you can make use of it there are many many uses there are many many uses we will see one more use also uh, towards the end of the lecture ok plus it is innocent the byproduct is iodobenzene. So, it, it, I mean it does not cause any uh, decomposition of the products as, or, the, or the starting materials. So, that way this is pretty easy, but it is a nice oxidizing agent and um, so uh, what you get once again uh, what you get is the basically this uh, you will get this azirene uh, substituted azirene here and electron withdrawing group here. Okay. So, that means you can have all kinds of the azirenes. Okay. Now, now what you will find that azirenes again uh, you know can be converted to indole you have already seen before by simply heating it, but in you do not have to heat uh, at high temperature people have been using different catalyst now. For example, <coughs> uh, the one recently used uh, okay, is paradium, paradium chloride, paradium chloride and then uh, there is a the acetonitrile complex right. Those who are working with palladium complex, you will see uh, it is a very stable complex with 2 acetonitrile, sorry, 2 acetonitrile. So, uh, well, sorry, sorry, it, uh, in this case, it is a benzonitrile, benzonitrile. It, is a, it forms a nice complex, and, and uh, this complex is pretty soluble also in organic solvent. So, uh, with this uh, complex, you can decompose this azurine uh, directly to the anilin, uh, sorry, the uh, enol. Okay. So, similarly, there are or or you can use I think uh, the one that is used to generate uh, carbene from diazo compound what is this di rhodium what di rhodium tetraacetate this is a very uh, di rhodium tetraacetate this is a very nice again a complex is basically what it does it lowers the temperature of the decomposition. So, of these azirenes or azides and it generates nitrines and carbons in uh, uh, milder conditions. And uh, then the latest one, I think latest one is pretty interesting in uh, it has been published in 2010 and uh, what you add is nothing but ferrous chloride, ferrous chloride and that too uh, with only 5 percent. So, you see here the trend here that was the palladium expensive then rhodium little ex, I mean almost equally expensive, but ferrous chloride is pretty cheap anyway you will walk into uh, this uh, lab and find out the ferrous chloride and uh, at low temperature lower than just around 180 degree centigrade you can decompose and get the queen uh, indole. Okay. That means, uh, this is a very powerful method with regard to the starting material you can either use azides or you can use azirenes and that azirenes can be obtained from the enamino ketones or the auxins and they decomp for the decompositions or the for the rearrangements they, they have many options many different kinds of the catalysts and these things ok. And then so, what next this other that means uh, again going back to the little bit to the last class and so we had only there are two different kinds of uh, methods right general methods one is monosubstituted benzene other is the disubstituted benzene. The other, 
the, th uh, the third and fourth categories where you can make the benzene derivative is not really very popular. Okay. So, and, uh, so, so uh, the, in this one you can see here this is a mono substituted ones, mono substituted ones you know the, the okay. Uh, there are other ways also to look at. Uh, for example, uh, if you take uh, inamine kind of thing, inamine kind of thing here uh, if you take a ketone uh, straight away make this inamine and so what you can guess how do you how do you make uh, indole from here. So, what is the reagent would you like to use? If you just take the atom balancing, if you do the little bit of uh, uh, atom counting, what you will find uh, it actually uh, removes uh, two of these indicated hydrogens. So, that is the reason this is known as dehydrogenative. Dehydrogenate, uh, this is a word very recently used uh, dehydrogenated coupling, the dehydrogenative coupling. That means minus uh, two, uh, two hydrogen, so you end up in, end up with the corresponding uh, indole derivative. So in principle, it looks pretty good, right? I mean, so easy. And inamine formation, you take from the ketones and do a little bit of the isolations, and then you get this inamine done. Uh, well, but uh, of course you have. Uh, only limited choice, but uh, but uh, I cannot say so. But uh, because by now uh, it is known that there are more than different, uh, more than uh, eight different catalytic systems are uh, found to be useful. Okay, and uh, and most of them are published in good journals. And uh, but basically, basically what you need, uh, need you need either uh, palladium-based catalyst or copper-based catalyst. Palladium based the copper based catalyst. I think all of you can agree that uh, okay, palladium has a tendency to undergo C palladation, C palladation reaction. Okay. Uh, means, uh, like so any palladium, palladium, palladium chemistry reactions, what do you do? Uh, let us say, first thing you have uh, learned in the, uh, last year, then all the cross coupling reactions would involve palladium. Why? Because the palladium undergo first insertion, okay, insertion between the carbon halogen bond and then it goes on for reaction with another carbon bond uh, carbon to form carbon palladium linkages. Okay. So, uh, in this case uh, I think I will give you the uh, possible catalyst then I will tell you how to uh, uh, see the mechanism. Okay, uh, the, 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 uh, let us say all are very similar all are very similar, but uh, um, and uh, only they differ little in their composition. For example, the very first one the popular one is palladium acetate, palladium acetate and this of course, this is expensive. So, you have to use catalytic amount and the stoichiometric uh, catalyst could be then uh, stoichiometric catalyst could be copper because copper acetate is uh, cheaper, copper acetate is cheaper. And, uh, and all of us know you need also a base because eventually acetic acid etcetera would come out. So, uh, in this case the base that is used is potassium carbonate this is one. Okay. Uh, let us say second one, second one you will see uh, once again uh, it is little better in the sense that you use palladium once again catalytic amount then cupric acetate is again the catalytic amount then what is the stoichiometric oxidant or what do we call terminal oxidant is oxygen itself, oxygen itself. So, that means this is second one is a better one. Okay. Uh, third one, third one is, is, is little uh, different, third one is little different and ferric chloride, ferric chloride once again it is a uh, catalytic amount then cupric acetate. So, all possible combinations are there then uh, combination and then with cupric chloride and then and has to be uh, has to have a base here right. So, uh, uh, fourth one I mean uh, once again 
the previous one was uh, paradigm acetate, uh, cupric acetate, oxygen, you can skip cupric acid, all different combination basically you have to do little bit of the trial and error. And the one that is little uncommon here is a, a cupric iodide, it is a cuprous iodide and fen right, fen all of you know and in this case lithium carbonate because it is little more soluble in organic solvents. Uh, so, uh, what is fen? Uh, fen uh, what is that but uh, not 910 it is not 910 I suppose it is 110 fen has to be 110 right not 910 or oh, you go orthophenol sorry that is I think okay fine we'll, I, I think we will take it orthophenol sorry. So, like this you know the, the and the last thing there are many more there are many more uh, combinations. I think I, I think I'll uh, stop here, and uh, of course the uh, one more very popular one is this one, this um, phenyl iodinum diacetate. This is also uh, has been used, and uh, and that too at a pretty low temperature at uh, 60 degree centigrade. So you have all kinds of the op options, and um, mechanistically, I mean, and, and ob obviously uh, mechanistically, uh, if you uh, look at the mechanism. So, what is the first step? The first step would involve palladation, palladation of a <coughs> that means hydrogen here. Here, let us say you have palladium acetate, right? And all of us know how to shift the arrows from enamine. So, it goes to palladium, and so what you will see uh, then uh, further rearrangement. So, what you will be getting? You will be getting. Uh, R1, R2, and here would be palladium acetate, right? All of us know. And I mean, I just skipped the second step that is the loss of hydrogen from the uh, position swap hydrogen uh, palladium is attached, right? Just like aromatic electrophilic substitution reactions. So, hydrogen is lost, and then uh, uh, you get to this. So, pala um, palladium is now incorporated at the beta position with respect to the nitrogen and what is next uh, these are all the standard protocol what is expected now what is next step. So, these are all uh, typical uh, organometallic mechanism I mean uh, that there, there could be many more the organometallic chemist would do all kinds of things then pi complex this thing insertion substitution all these things, but uh, organic chemist you know skips all those steps. Uh, basically, we just uh, very quickly go to the final product. So, what is the next step? Next step is the insertion of palladium between carbon and hydrogen. I mean, there are so many carbon and hydrogen, of course, the one that is aromatic one, CH. So, uh, what you will find, you will find uh, so something like this uh, would form this is R1, R2, and hydrogen, and this, right. So, <coughs> And then, uh, so the mysticians are then, of course, acetic acid comes out, right? Acetic acid comes out, and then, then you have all kinds of the ligands here. And by now, all of you know what is the next step? Reductive elimination. Reductive elimination. So, reductive elimination, and that means uh, it will go like this and this. So, once you have the reductive elimination of palladium 0. So, what do you get? You get the product palladium 0. and then, then there the palladium has to be recycled. Uh, recycled means ha has to be converted into divalent palladium. So, you need an oxidizing agent. What is the oxidizing agent? You know, as you will see on the list, uh, in one case it is cupric acetate, other case cupric acetate oxygen, and uh, oxygen will uh, you know will be activated to hydrogen peroxide that oxidizes this palladium to palladium zero. So, all kinds of techniques are there. Then ferric chloride, uh, different kinds of the oxidizing agent. But in certain cases, the reactions are bad. Some reactions are very good, depending on the situation. And you have to be a little expert in uh, finding out the optimum conditions. But in organic chemistry, often we do what we do. Uh, we just keep on optimizing different things, you know, without knowing little bit of the thing, right? Okay. So, but any case, but in this method of, uh, but um, for unfortunately, for example, uh, I will not tell you the uh, exact problem. Uh, long back, we had a similar problem. We could not solve the problem, okay, and uh, we could not solve the problem. Maybe in uh, 
uh, in a few, few months time we will again take up the problem. Uh, exactly this very similar problem only thing that R 1 R 2 was a, uh, a member of a R 1 R 2 were member of a cycle. So, we could not connect them, but someone in fact uh, many of you know uh, he is uh, pretty well known uh, heterocyclic chemist Dr. Noel right. Noel Carr, right. Noel Carr, he came here. Uh, uh, he has done this thing pretty easily without much problem. Uh, uh, he has uh, used uh, cupric acetate and uh, phenyl iodinum acetate uh, and got the uh, carboxyl derivative without much problem. That means, in one in this case, the other side also is a cycle, but he could get to this carboxyl derivative without. Okay. A few years ago, I mean, one also. Could uh, just I mean, I mean one could also uh, convert this just simply with iodine. Iodine is an oxidizing agent for all practical purposes because it gets converted to iodide. So if you just mix them together in a, in a high uh, at a high temperature, it can give you the carbazole. Uh, but in principle, there are many methods available. And what you'll see here, I just one I'll give you one more example. Uh, it's uh, again starting from mono substituted one, but in this case this uh, enamine is little different though. So, again it is an enamine though, enamine now nitrogen is not linked to the aromatic ring system. So, you have a hydrogen here that means circled hydrogen, this circled hydrogen and there are two different kinds of hydrogen. So, if you have a proper oxidizing agent and it should undergo dehydrogenative cross coupling, dehydrogenative cross coupling or we call cross dehydrogenated coupling, dehydrogenative coupling. So, once again this the combination is palladium acetate, cupric acetate and this is uh, uh, 10 mole percent, 10 mole percent means catalytic and this is one equivalent uh, cupric acetate and of course, uh, without saying one can write the corresponding um, indole derivative, indole derivative. So, that means, uh, one, uh, this example will tell you I uh, say pretty uh, useful reaction, uh, the useful way of looking at the. Now, next one, next one, this has been very popular these days, uh, this is known as Laroc hetero annulation right hetero annulation and uh, what is the meaning of annulation formation of a new ring with minim formation of uh, minimum two minimum two bonds with minimum through minimum two bond new bonds Okay. formation of a new ring by uh, formation of minimum two bond, bonds. Okay. In this case, you are incorporating one hetero atom into the new ring. So, that is the reason it is known as hetero. And what is the starting material? In this case, it is the see, previous one was in sort of like intramolecular reactions, but in this case the Laroque annulation of the name itself says that actually it should be intramolecular reaction. Normally, annulations are intermolecular reactions. That means you have to have two different components, okay? uh, two different components, and in this case, one of the component uh, is let us say like this, that means alkynes. One of the components is alkyne, and then other component uh, is now uh, for a change, it is now I say di substituted, di substituted. Uh, benzene derivative. That means iodo acetanolide, let us say iodo aniline kind of iodo anilines. So, one kind of one class is iodo anilines, other kind is uh, alkynes. By the way, these alkynes are known as or classified as internal alkyne, right? It is not a terminal alkyne. Terminal alkyne means uh, hydrogen is free, okay? So, internal alkyne. And what is again the catalyst is say, say palladium based catalyst. So, palladium based catalyst and uh, of, often 
a little bit of sodium chloride, lithium chloride is used, many of you know, because it is easier to substitute uh, a, a ligand with a, a, para, a chlorine at the a palladium. Okay. And advantage, advantage that you get <coughs> aniline derivative, so di substitute aniline derivative, uh, 2, 3 di substitute aniline derivative in one single pot one single pot fine. Now, so that means, if you have a symmetrical alkyne there is no problem, but if you have let us say if you have two different group one is large of course, the other is a, a smaller one then you will have different problems. The two position could be with larger other uh, one could be smaller. So, there are you, you have a possibility of regio isomeric for regio isomer formation. Okay. Fortunately, fortunately this method is very regio selective, mean it, it gives only one isomer exclusively and uh, if you know little bit of um, the reaction mechanism, you can predict which one would be the uh, which one would form. That means, whether larger would be at the 2 position or uh, three, 3 position. Okay. But any case that is the reason why this method is, has been become very popular, because it is one part regio selective, it has it can tolerate uh, it can or rather uh, I mean the substitution tolerance are very uh, high tolerance is uh, ok. So, guess which one between the two R groups which one would be the larger one. See and often you see uh, when you go to this uh, typical electrophilic nucleophilic substitution reaction etcetera etcetera you will fo follow a mechanism, but if you want to just if you want to change the orientation etcetera etcetera then you go to the organometallic compounds. So, organ organometallic compounds gives a sort of uh, counter thermodynamic product counter thermodynamic product. For example, many of you know if you have an internal double bond you can shift, to the, uh, shift it to the terminus of an alkene by using an organometallic compound right. What is that? There are, there are methods you have an ol, uh, internal olefin you want to shift it to the uh, terminus of the chain carbon chain. You, you do hydroboration, you do hydroboration with a bulky group then keep on hitting uh, because of the bulk it will go to the end then 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 you uh, uh, use one more alkene where this boron would be transferred to the second alkene. So, like this you know. So, similarly this most of the organometric reactions are sensitive, sensitive to steric effect because of that this uh, uh, R larger would be in a particular position and giving rise to the uh, particular regio isomer. Okay. Uh, I will give you the answer let us say if you can make out and in almost always uh, the larger uh, group would end up in the position 2. So, obviously the uh, other option is this is the smaller one. Okay. And mechanistically, mechanistically, uh, okay. Uh, okay uh, should I write? Uh, mechanistically, one can quickly think about that. Uh, palladium has a job to undergo oxidative addition, right? So, if you have palladium zero, uh, palladium zero, you will undergo oxidative addition. Then what? Palladium because of the iodine here is electrophilic in nature, right? So, one would expect that that, that uh, polar character would dictate this uh, orientation of the acetylene, but in this case because it is a metal temperature reaction. So, uh, eventually this uh, larger group would, should be away from the thing and uh, it will undergo insertions uh, the way here larger here and the are <coughs> here is a smaller one. Okay. So, I mean you can say first it forms the complex and then this is smaller one and here you have a palladium uh, etcetera etcetera are larger 
then NH acetate and then of course, the palladium undergoes uh, reductive elimination. So, a reductive elimination. Okay. So, <coughs> so, this is how that means basically the I mean uh, uh, during this insertion uh, the, it is oriented in a such a manner that actually the smaller one would be uh, linked to the uh, benzene ring system. Okay. So, uh, that means it is a powerful uh, reaction, it is one pot reaction, starting materials are very simple alkynes, okay. uh, all uh, this ortho anilines, ortho iodo anilines can be easily made. Um, if you have uh, proper substitution, you can just simply adding iodine to the anilin, you can get the corresponding iodo compound, because anilines are pretty activated. I will just give you one example that would tell you this uh, importance of this reaction. Uh, if you and it can accommodate all kinds of the substituents here like you have aniline oxygen here and then uh, this is a chi chiral auxiliary I do not know whether you know or not this is a chiral auxiliary where you have this ethoxy on both the sides, then you have isopropyl group here and T E S. Let us say this is a chiral, this is a chiral auxiliary. Uh, <coughs> Reaction conditions. Reaction conditions: uh, palladium uh, acetate, lithium chloride, then uh, sodium carbonate, and DMF 100 degree centigrade. 100 degree centigrade. So. Uh, both the substrates uh, satisfy the requirements. One is iodo aniline, then uh, other one is an alkyne, internal alkyne. And now we have to decide. This is the C, the C here, trithyl silyl group, and, uh, and on the other end of this alkyne you have CH2. So between the two, which one is larger? I think all of us would agree silicon, right? Silicon is heavily substituted, so it's a larger group. And and this uh, other auxiliary which is known as actually is a pretty famous one uh, Skolkov, this is called Skolskov auxiliary, it is uh, it's a must auxiliary which can produce amino acid, actually it can produce amino acid uh, okay. and it is obtained from if you look at this uh, substrate here this portion comes from valine the other person comes from the glycine okay. and, uh, so the, and this imine portion remains unaffected, silicon moiety remains unaffected and in one part uh, what you will be getting, you will be getting this aniline uh, sorry uh, indole derivative here and this one is the, the terminal uh, sorry um, alkyne portion and uh, this is uh, trithyl silyl portion and then uh, you have this uh, group here then the nitrogen the, both the nitrogens are with respect to each other in the uh, 1 and 4 positions. Then you have this isopropyl side chain and this ethyl side chain uh, ethyl side chain ethoxy side chains that is it. And it could have been the other way, but uh, as I said already that this larger group would be uh, attached to the uh, C2 position. So, you will have a nice this one, uh, this linkage and what next? And if you uh, just uh, treat this with uh, 2 normal HCl in ethanol and what you will find of course, uh, the indole ring is pretty stable. 
there are three things uh, there are three things uh, which take place here uh, uh, three things actually are uh, hydrolysis so hydrolysis would give you hydrolysis is uh, give you this uh, uh, amino group here uh, ester here this is uh, an h2 and of course this one that means it hydrolyzed this uh, heterocycle that uh, pyrazine derivative hydrolyzed the shift space right the shift space that means hydrolysis would give you this ester here and on this side it would be basically uh, this would be valine the other should be uh, this uh, amino group that means basically hydrolysis would take place in the imine position. So, one side will generate this amino group and the other side will have the ester group it is nothing but it is a tryptophan derivative and under the same condition also deserialization takes place. So, it is a nice way of getting these optically active uh, tryptophan derivatives tryptophan derivatives okay. and <coughs> so uh, what, uh, what else one more uh, style of um, uh, getting in all derivative is well known the, that also starts from this alkyne derivatives. So, alkyne derivatives here uh, again something like this if you have and uh, this NH2 and uh, NH2 uh, it is a very popular one what you have to do just basically you have to use a base and you will straight away uh, go to the product here uh, with uh, substituent that means uh, this alkyne derivatives of all of us know can be obtained by Sonogasier coupling from the corresponding iodo compound. So, that means, you, that, that means you can make use of the terminal alkyne. So, terminal alkyne right that means they want iodo anilene you can separately uh, separately do this uh, Sonogasier coupling and then you can get to this one and then this cyclization can be achieved by use of uh, different bases different bases ok. Uh, like the uh, the one example I will tell you uh, it is quite uh, uh, need to see that uh, how this is uh, alkyne uh, can be converted to corresponding indole derivative. Uh, here you have uh, phenols uh, sorry uh, fluorine substituents and mind it it is a base, it is a base sodium ethoxide ethanol and of course ethanol is there means the temperature is not very high only 70 degree centigrade, uh, 70 degree centigrade and once again in one pot you get to the corresponding indole derivative, indole derivative ok and that too uh, 2, 3 unsubstituted indole derivative. Uh, okay. So, what you see here that there are three things are happening uh, one is um, cyclization as if this uh, nit nitrogen minus is attacking this um, alkyne. So, undergoing cyclization the second thing that is going deserialization third thing that is taking place is known as alkoxy decarbonylation alkoxy decarbonylation that means uh, CO O M E. So, this is or in this case methoxy decarbonylation more precisely uh, methoxy group and the decarbonylation taking place. So, you get to this one and <coughs> okay. now <coughs> this has been known there are in most cases either ethoxide sodium ethoxide potassium, potassium ethoxide or potassium tertiary butoxide very uh, recently very recently. Uh, what I said is a Nokel type, it is a Nokel actually Paul Nokel is a German scientist. What he did, uh, his protocol is very similar, but he could again uh, publish in a uh, good journal uh, only uh, doing a small change in the reaction conditions, reaction conditions. What was it? It is a potassium tertiary butoxide, tertiary butoxide and NMP. NMP what is it N methyl pyrrolidinone N -methyl, again a heterocyclic right. So, it is a high boiling solvent. So, high boiling solvent this and of course, the product is 
the corresponding indole derivative, product corresponding indole derivative. So, what is the difference? And uh, what is the difference between the previous one and this one? In the, in the previous case, we had sodium ethoxide, ethanol, and 70 degree centigrade. One in this and the latest one, only you have lowered down the temperature, lower down the temperature. So, and that means just that means this, this is a good achievement, just lowering down the temperature. And say and why is it so? Because the what is the job of the NMP? NMP actually solubilize all these alkoxides. Okay, it can it, it can help. So, so, so ethanol does not dissolve these alkoxides, but here it can, it can uh, 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 solubilize this alkoxide, and hence this uh, you can accelerate the reaction. Okay, so there are other uh, reactions. I mean, there are many other uh, kinds of reactions. I have already told you before. Uh, there are uh, name like Castro reactions. Again, starting from this iodo alanes, then you have paradigm catalyzed cyclizations of uh, allyl alanes. Then there are other also called Ma indole uh, synthesis, then Kakchi indole synthesis, Kakchi indole synthesis. So, so likewise many, but the, the, the popular one, most popular one, what we learned is still there in the textbook though, and that is known as uh, Gassman indole synthesis. So, I think uh, you will find this Gassman indole synthesis uh, both in Gil Gilkis books and uh, Jules book. Uh, but just uh, very briefly what it is, it is nothing but it again starts from aniline, you start from aniline and uh, I will just uh, tell you only this much, uh, okay. uh, you generate uh, something like this uh, amino kind of ketone, amino kind of ketone and here you will have uh, the way they make this substrate uh, introduces an ASME group at the uh, this particular position. Okay. This is a sort of a kind of you can say intramolecular Pomerar shifting. Okay. I mean I, I can go on talking about it, uh, it starts from uh, actually uh, something like this, then you do this di the corresponding disulfide, the disulfide under the condition it forms the sulfonium salt, then undergoes uh, then in the presence of triethylamine it forms carbon ion and just like so many Hauser reaction it undergoes incorporation at the ortho position. Okay. And of course, once you have a substrate like this and then uh, rest is quite easy just simply hitting it uh, you will end up uh, in an indole derivative uh, with an ASME group with an ASME group. Of course, and the next one is No, no, but you have to remove sulfur here. How do you remove sulfur? The standard protocol is Rani nickel. So, if you use Rani nickel, sulfur is knocked off, and uh, so your product is this. Okay. And the last one, last one is what? Last one is Madelung synthesis. What, what is Madelung synthesis? Madelung synthesis is uh, again, uh, it is something like this, right? You have to have a CH3 group here, NH, and this thing. What it does actually, you have you have to use a base, strong base. So potassium tartrate butoxide, and ortho, so, so orthotoluidine can be formulated in the presence of formic acid, and you get the formal derivative N formal to orthotoluidine. So in the presence of strong base. And so, what you will get? You will get the corresponding um, indole derivative. Me mechanistically, mechanistically, what is mechanism? Uh, this reaction uh, forms a anion here, NH, and then the CHO. So that means, and this anion formation is, uh, I think, we call it. We call it. In fact, a lot of people have called this name. It's called lateral metallization. It, it is known as lateral metallation. Lateral metallation. Lateral, lateral metallation means basically lateral means sidewise. That means side chain, side chain metallation. 
and more precisely it is the benzylic methylation. Okay. And the latest development in, in this area if you use n-butyl lithium the reaction can be run at 20 degree centigrade otherwise the reaction has to be carried out at let us say 200 degree centigrade. So, there is a major change now okay. and the, uh, I have a paper with, paper with me the same person known as Bartoli right remember Bartoli indole synthesis Bartoli in 1990 he has modified the metal uh, procedure he has he used you know dilithio compounds dilithio compounds and instead of using a formyl group he has introduced this ester here and then in uh, converted uh, the correspond converted them to, cor to corresponding indole derivative okay that's a little more versatile we can you can use make use of any kind of ester to introduce the substitution at the two position okay so that means all these some of the old methods also are still useful some are still useful but um, and the new, among the new methods which one is the, which are the new let us say so far we have described uh, six or seven different indole synthesis we talked about right uh, which one is thing uh, uh, is more versatile so in the last class we talked about three right uh, fisher then bartoli and then it's then it's that school okay so in the last class actually fisher indol is more most versatile probably and the next most versatile could be i think laro but it has 